All right, today we'll be going over automation with the FortiGate firewall. We'll start with an overview and then we'll get into a more complex example with FortiSwitch, FortiGate, and FortiAnalyzer. All right, so to start, we go to Security Fabric Automation on the FortiGate firewall, and then we'll notice three columns, Stitch, Trigger, and Action, right? So you can think of Trigger and Action as uh, if-then logic, right? Trigger, Action, Logic. So with a trigger, that's a set of criteria that we are going to need to match, right? So first things first, we need to create a trigger. So if we look at some triggers that are available on the FortiGate, a couple examples would be, okay, taking in an event from a 40 analyzer. Another one would be is, okay, if we're using too much memory on the 40 gate and we hit conserve mode, that would be a trigger. High CPU is a trigger. Um, you know, additionally, maybe a, a certain event seen in the event log. Let's just click into that for a second. We could actually create an, an event based off of any of the system events that get created, we can have a trigger, right? So we, we, we need to first start by configuring our trigger and then after that, we're gonna create an action. Right, an action is gonna be, okay, based on the criteria or the trigger, what are we going to actually do from the firewall's perspective? Are we going to ban an IP address, send out an email, um, send a webhook or, or pretty much a customized um, REST callback to a third party appliance? So whatever it might be, you can notice fairly quickly here is that there's a lot of flexibility in in this if, if then or trigger action logic on the FortiGate. Now, what ties the triggers and actions together is going to be the stitch. So if we were to create a new stitch, let's go create new, there we have it, right? We can see a trigger and it's going to reference that trigger column and then an action that's going to reference the action column. Right here, we could actually just create the, the triggers on the fly from here and you, you'll notice the same kind of sections there, right? And same for the action. Just create those and we'll see those same sections from that, that action column. All right, let's go over an example with high CPU, right? So we wanna be warned if there's a high CPU event that occurs. So let's just create the trigger as high CPU. Um, we'll just name it high CPU. Okay, let's click that, hit apply. All right, and, and as an action, we can create an email. Um, let's just say, you know, alert email, um, we'll do this, you know, TTP Fortinet at, you know, test.com. The subject will be, let's just say high CPU, right? And in the body, we, you know, you can see that there's a variable here that that's going to, we'll, we'll see what that value is, but it's kind of cool there, right? We have some customizability as to what type of information is actually going to be shown there based off of the, the results of, of the trigger. But in this case, we'll just leave um, log as as the default here and we'll click alert email okay so there we go so we can add more actions if we want to but in this case let's just stick with if there's a high cpu event let's send an alert email all right so i'm just going to use a, a you know a traffic generator to to help me generate that that high cpu uh use case that we're looking for here so if i you know run that 40 tester go back to the 40 gate Let's just take a look and, and, and see the CPU usage. There we go. Okay, so we've hit that high CPU use case. All right, so it seemed like after about a minute or so of consistently high CPU, uh, the trigger, uh, so under security fabric automation and that stitch, uh, the trigger count went to one. So I should be receiving the email now. All right, there we have it. We received an email and it showed us about the high CPU usage being detected. Okay, so now let's go over a more complex example using 40 gate, 40 switch, and 40 analyzer, right? And, and the main idea here is to show that there's a lot of flexibility that, that you have when you're using these trigger and action scenarios. Um, you don't need to have this exact same example, but I think this, this really shows how much power there is to it. So in this example, we have a reach out to a server, right? Uh, this could be, a, you know, an, a server that's on the public internet, and then, you know, unfortunately, the response is going to be, you know, a, a malware uh, download for that client. So the client was 192.168.111.109. So the FortiGate here, in this particular case, it's done its job. It's going to block that traffic. It's going to ensure that that virus does not get downloaded on the machine. So that's great. But here's the thing, that machine, 192.168.111.109, it did something that was potentially um, 
unusual. You know, that unusual behavior could indicate that maybe 192.168.111.109 could, you know, inflict other types of attacks maybe internally on the network, right? So whether it was an intentional download or unintentional isn't really the point here. It's more just that maybe we want to take additional action in addition to just blocking that download and and also, you know, quarantine that machine so that it can't access the internet, uh, but also so that it can't access any type of uh, other internal hosts. So in this case, since we have a 40 analyzer, the 40 analyzer is aware about that virus download as well because the 48 is sending all logs to the analyzer, right? So the analyzer can say, hey, 48, I'm sending you the trigger, right? So it sends the 48 that trigger. And then additionally, the 40 gate has an automation stitch, which has that trigger and also has an action associated with it. The action being a Mac level quarantine, right? Or, or a layer two quarantine. So it can tell the 40 switch, which is also part of essentially the, the fabric. Um, it can tell the 40 switch, okay, let's also take do a Mac level quarantine so that one, you know, that machine can't access any of those external resources, but also it can't access any type of internal resources, right? Because, you know, the, the action was taken on the 40 switch. So you could, you know, alternatively, let's say you didn't have a 40 switch. Maybe your action is going to be something like banning the IP address from just the 40 gate so that any type of external access will be uh, blocked. But then obviously you can't protect against any type of uh, essentially intra VLAN communication. So the, the 109 IP would still be able to communicate with the 110 IP and anything else on that network because the switch uh, port wasn't involved, right? Okay, so now let's get into the config of, um, you know, we're going to be focusing on the 40 gate and the 40 analyzer here. All right, so let's start by going to the 40 analyzer under the 40 gate event handler section and let's create a new handler here. So we'll just call this uh, 40 gate virus. Um, and then as the filter, we'll go, okay, 40 gate. We'll say that we want to look for a virus log. Okay, so we'll just say, yeah, I guess in this case, any matching criteria greater than or equal to the value of debug. So the log level of the virus being greater than debug, so really any virus, um, we're going to trigger based on that. And then, you know, we can maybe put something else in here. I don't know, FortiGate, you know, antivirus blocked. Alrighty, and system info. Okay, so let's also send an alert email. In my case, I'm just using just a local mail server, but uh, you'd have to set that up uh, as an aside. I'll put a suggested video here on how to actually, um, a little more information on 40 analyzer configuration, but let's just type in, you know, something like this, TTP Fortinet, same idea, Fortinet test.com. Okay. okay, sounds good. So we're done there. So pretty much when a virus is seen from the FortiGate, um, this rule will get triggered, and that's really what's the most important part of automation. But I also added an, another extra step. Let's just fire out an email at the same time so the administrator knows, and then let's hit OK. All right, so now if I were to download a virus, what we want to do is, you know, and I've tested it a couple times here, but, um, you know, we want that event to, that number to increase while we're testing. So if I were to download a virus right now, that should go from 17 to to 18, for example, that's how we know that this rule is successfully triggering and, and also we're going to be receiving that email. So, so let's start by testing that. Okay, there it is. So I did, I did in the background, I attempted to download a virus, a test virus, and that number has increased. So our trigger is now working successfully. All right, now back to our 40 gate, let's create a new automation stitch. And we're going to say, um, you know, we'll just say access layer quarantine underscore virus. Okay, so if we add a new trigger, in this case, it's going to be a 40 analyzer event handler. Um, we'll say, you know, we'll just name it 40 gate virus. And then the event handler name is going to be 40 gate virus. So you notice that, right? Just, um, just the 40 gate being connected to the 40 analyzer, we're going to um, be able to see that event handler that we created in 40 analyzer without actually doing any type of configuration on the 40 gate. 
right? So we just select that event handler um, to be our trigger. Awesome, so we have our trigger configured now. All right, now as a next step, let's add an action. So that action in this case is going to be a CLI script. Um, I'm gonna put the CLI script contents into the description of this video, so you can just copy and paste it. But this is what I did. I just kind of found out how to do this via the CLI to do an access layer quarantine. And then we'll just go, I'm just typing this in as 40 switch quarantine. And then um, we'll, it'll be a super admin user running that those commands. Okay. Okay, there we go. So we have our trigger and we have our action and we should be ready to go here. Now, as a quick aside, what that CLI command that we just uh, configured just a moment ago, uh, what that actually does, um, just to give you kind of a visual, is when we go to our 40 link with our um, 40 gate managing our 40 switch, let's look at this machine. This is the machine that we're actually going to download the virus from. That's 192.168.111.9. Um, you know, if we look at this option here, quarantine host, if I were to click this option, what it's going to do is it's actually going to pretty much do a, a, a quarantine on that switch port, right? So that's pretty much all that we're doing is I just found the same CLI commands to run whatever we're doing when we click this option. And, and that's what I've configured as the CLI, um, as a CLI script. All right, now let's just test this from start to finish. So let's just make sure this machine has access to the internet. Yes, it does. And then let's just download some uh, you know, some test virus samples, and we'll just make sure that they're going to be blocked by the FortiGate. Perfect. Step one, that's working correctly. Now on the 40 analyzer, if we want to here, what we can do is maybe just double check to see that that raw log has come in. Uh, so we've seen, okay, there we go. So we see, and this is right now it's 945. So we see that those logs came in pretty quickly. So that's going to be the raw log that gets uh, triggered on our event handler gets triggered. All right, so we should see that FortiGate virus goes from 18 to 19. Let's refresh it. Okay, we have it at 19. We should have received that, that email showing that the virus came in. We did receive that as well. Now the next, now that the event handler has triggered from the 40 analyzer, it, it just has to, we might have to wait a minute or so here, but um, we need to see this access layer quarantine uh, that trigger count go up showing that the the 40 gate is aware of of that trigger action occurring right so after yeah about a minute or so we should see that go from a zero to a one okay so now that we can see the trigger count has increased from zero to one and if we go to our wi-fi and switch controller our 40 switch ports Let's take a look. Port three, we can see that that machine has been quarantined. It kind of shows us the GUI indication as well that it's been quarantined with this black and uh, yellow border here. Um, and then we can remove the quarantine. Just before we remove the quarantine though, let's just confirm that we can no longer access the, the internet because of the, the quarantine on the switch port. Uh, additionally, any type of intra VLAN communication is not going to work because of, of the, the, the switch quarantine as well. And back to the switch, let's remove that quarantine. Okay, so we've lifted the quarantine and it might take a second or two here, it's pretty quick. Yep, there we go. And now we have access to the internet again. Now, real quick, I think it's worth uh, mentioning a couple troubleshooting tools that we can have, especially for some of these more advanced use cases. So if we type in Diag Test Application um, Auto D one, what we can do is that we can enable log, um, logging of packet dump. And then if we go diag debug application auto D uh, minus one, and then diag debug enable. Now we're going to get a lot more visibility as to, you know, the communication between the, the 40 gate, the 40 analyzer and how to parse certain statistics. So let's just quickly go over an example. I'm going to re redo that uh, antivirus test here. Okay, so with the debug running, when the trigger count goes from one number and it increases by one, that's when you're going to see this debug output. So based on this debug output that just came in, there's a lot of key value pairs, and that's why this is so valuable is to be able to actually gain information about uh, the trigger that comes in. So for example, we can see information like, um, you know, the device 
the the serial number of the forty gate, the name of the forty gate, the um, the IP address, you know, the source IP, the um, the source MAC address, right? So let's look for that source MAC address. There we go, EP MAC. Right, so we see that the EP MAC value is, and then that's that's my MAC address. But your MAC address and every other MAC address is going to be different. So we need to use that EP MAC value as a as a variable if we want to actually reference it in an action, right? Which is exactly what what I did to make that initial script. I you know just said okay, let's let's create a quarantine. Um, so all this stuff is generic that I'm highlighting. But then the the one item that's always going to be variable is log.epmac, right? So we can use that variable in our, um, our automation action script, right? And you can use any of these other values as well. And then, you know, as part of that too, the debug shows us, okay, this is the, the commands that were run, um, you know, and, and information about the, the scripts here, right? So really valuable tool in case uh, you need to do any type of troubleshooting or to help you in the parsing process to help you uh, create an action there. So that wraps up this tutorial. Thanks guys for joining in and we'll see you in the next one.